Welcome back to Cooking Fun with Joanna, with me, your host, Joanna Hodoroska. I am a holistic nutritionist and a inflammation expert. And we are going to be making another fun meal. Uh, and it's roasted pork with vegetables and fresh corn polenta. So the fresh, you know, we're going to be doing a couple of different things and you'll need a fruit processor to make the polenta because we're not using a store-bought. We're actually using an ear or two of corn and we're going to take the, the um, husk it and then put the husk, the, the cooked corn into the food processor. Make sense? Oh. I know, it's something fun and totally different. Never had it. So here we're going to do something new. But we're going to do the, the corn, and I'm doing two, two corns. Then I'm doing a quarter head of cabbage. I'm probably going to use only half the set of broccoli. And you can use more for, for Harvey, Shannon, okay? <laughs> Extra for him. Extra for him, because he really, really likes it. Loves and then, it. Uh, <laughs> And, and you know, I'm only kidding because he really doesn't. But if you chop it up small enough, he might not notice it's even there. Um, okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, then we're going to use an eggplant, maybe two. And then there's some parsley for garnish. And then, of course, we need the... I think I've tried to move the pork chops three times and they're still on the other side of the kitchen. Um, I actually have thick cut pork chops, so I'm going to cut them in half so that they're thinner. And then I'm going to um, just grill each one separately. So the question is, where do you start, right? And so what we're going to start with is we're going to, and then you'll need ancho chili powder or the chili pepper. If you don't have the ancho, which is, you know, a lot milder, it's got the flavor without the spicy kick. McCormick makes it. It's actually the best thing for that don't like hot and spicy like me and you're going to need an onion but we're going to um if you have a steamer basket that might be the way to do it but you're going to put some water into a big pot and we're going to just heat up that that corn and i've got to cut the end of my corn off with the big knife because it's not fitting into the it's not fitting into the pot we're going to use some of, we're going to um, cook the corn. And you can put the, the ends into it too. But um, we're going to use, use some of the liquid from the corn um, in the polenta in the food process. Okay? Did you follow that kind of sort of? Yep. So you're going to take your corn, put it into, I, this is a six quart pot. I had to cut the tops off to make the corn fit. And then I'm gonna put about an inch of water into here and then turn it on and cover it. And we're probably gonna cook that for, we're gonna let it come to a boil and then um, let it kind of, I think I'm gonna bring it to a boil and then probably turn it off. That way I won't have to worry about it having to be, like I, have, I don't have to baby the, cooking or maybe the stove. So what we're going to do now is we're going to roast the vegetables and you're going to do the vegetables in one pan and the pork in another. Make sense? Yep. And if it doesn't make sense, hopefully it will some at some point. So if you've got the electric stove, you want to turn that pan on. And what we're going to do is first we're going to chop up the um, the onions and then we're going to slice all the the vegetables into like florets we're just going to cut the onions into um into half moons so we're not going to dice it we're just going to cut it into half moons but i'm going to use the whole onion so i'm going to cut the bottom off and you want to use a big butcher knife because you can do a lot more with that butcher knife than you can with a small petite one more leverage. And then you're gonna peel that first layer of onion off and leave the tail on and just use that knife. And if it's not sharp enough, 
can use your sharpener. And then you're gonna cut it into like half inch slices. Actually, I think mine are less than that. Mine are more like quarter inch slices. But you're gonna cut them in half moons. And then you're gonna dig your nails into the end here. Even though you could just hold on to the tail, I still find that digging, digging a your nail into it will hold it into place a little bit better. And then if you make stock, these ends are really good for that. If you don't make stock, then just toss it. So we're gonna do the same thing with the other half of the onion. Cut. I'm going to turn my pan on on medium high heat. And I think you can cut them. I don't know if you can see that from here or not. But you're going to put a little bit of olive oil into that pan. And my corn is starting to thinking about boiling, but it's not there yet. I'm gonna move the onions over a little bit and hope that I have enough room here to cut the, I'm gonna cut the, um, the eggplant into matchsticks. So I'm gonna chop that end off, chop the other end off, and then cut it in half. So you're basically gonna have like an inch and a half size wedge. And then you're gonna cut that into um, half inch slices and then you're going to turn it down its side and cut it into matchsticks and so there should be about half inch at the most thick and I can hear my corn starting to boil. So after I cut this, I'm just gonna cover it. And one more slice here. This is why you need sharp knives so that you can cut things closely. All right, so I'm gonna cover my corn. Actually, I'm gonna put the timer on for four minutes and let it, let it just, cook. And I think my pan is heating up, so I'm going to put the onions and the and the eggplant in. And we're going to caramelize this. So that means we're not going to stir it very much. We're putting the onions and the eggplant in the same pan together? Right. We're putting the onions, the eggplant, we're gonna put the, you know, some of the broccoli and cauliflower all into that pan. Just gonna kind of care, try to caramelize it. We're gonna use half of this, this cauliflower because I think the other, otherwise I won't have any room for the broccoli. But you're gonna, Basically cut it into, into florets. So you're gonna slice it and then cut it into one inch or half inch um, florets. So that's gonna be the easy part, right? And then if you don't wanna use this big chunk, then don't. I'm gonna get rid of this one big chunk as well. And then just add that into the pan. And I'm gonna use one more florette. I'm 
And then you're gonna do the same thing with the broccoli. And I'm gonna use half of my head of broccoli here. And you're gonna be basically making these one inch or half inch Clorox as well. Again, if you don't wanna use this, you can just throw the, the broccoli, um, what the heck do you call this part? The stem, you can you put that into a, into a smoothie. Or you can put it into a composting pile. So the easiest thing is to just kind of cut down the into cut the broccoli into slices and then take the those slices, put it on its side, and cut the florets into half inch strips. Hopefully you're following. And then you're gonna add that into the pan with the onions. And if you need more olive oil, then feel free to put in more olive oil. We use a wooden spoon. And I'm going to stir my vegetables just to get the um the oil over the pan and over the contents so that they'll kind of caramelize a lot easier and a lot better and a wooden spoon typically just uh doesn't smash anything So we're gonna put a little bit of the, we're, eventually we're gonna put a little bit of the oregano on there. I'm gonna turn that off. I'm gonna turn the corn off because my four minutes are up. And I don't know how you, how do you test corn? You have to hook it with a... All right, so we're gonna, I'm gonna turn my corn off and let this cool down a little bit. Cause I'm gonna need to be able to um handle it to take the corn off the cob with a knife if you want to flip your corn i would i would suggest it that way you'll be sure to have both sides cooked evenly we're gonna let that cool a little bit so that we can actually handle it and then we're going to put some salt and pepper onto our vegetables. And a little bit of the oregano onto there too. And I like using a pepper mill. Oops, I almost put the ancho chili in there. You're gonna take about a half a teaspoon and just sprinkle it over the vegetable. And if it's dried like mine is, which was fresh from somebody's garden, then you can just kind of uh, roll it in, in between your fingers and just spread it around. And do it as, even as, as evenly as you can. And if it's not so even, it doesn't matter because you're going to mix it together anyway. We're also going to need some ground cloves. I forgot to mention that earlier on. But that's going to go in with the with the with the meat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and cut the cut my pork into thinner slices because mine's thick and I'm going to cut it in half. If you've got the electric stove, now would be a good time to actually turn that um, turn that heater up, turn the burner on to heat up the pan. But you want the you want thinner cutlets for the for the pork. If you want to use chicken instead, that's fine too. 
If you want to make the whole recipe vegetarian, then you can use a uh, portobello mushroom. This is another benefit of having a really good knife is that you can just cut these, cut a thick piece of meat in half and it makes it easier. You make your own cutlets. So I'm just gonna be making four cutlets. And if you want the vegetables to cook faster, you can always cover them. I want you to pour a little bit of the oil, uh, olive oil into that pan that you're gonna cook the cutlets in. And I'm actually gonna put the cutlets aside for now. No, actually I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this whole cutting board aside for now and pull out another one. So that I can work with the corn. So what I'm gonna suggest is that you get a bowl and you're going to, I think, I don't know, I don't know how well this will work. You might actually want to use a, a smaller knife, but you're going to hold on to the, the corn. You might need to use a, one of those, what do they call these things? The corn skewer? Well, it doesn't matter. Either way, if you can hold on to it, you're just gonna cut the the corn off the cob. And if you get too close to the cob, then it's really hard to cut, which is what I did a couple of times. But you're gonna be, it's gonna be hot. So you're gonna be having to grab and re-grab, and then you're gonna rotate the, the cob. And cut the next section. It gets a little easier the, the second or third rotation. <laughs> This corn is hot. Am I the only one that has a hot corn cob? Mine's not done yet. Pardon me? Yeah, mine wasn't done yet. Oh. Yeah. All right. Then I'm ahead of you guys. There you go. I'm ahead of you. So I'm wondering <laughs> if there's a way of, of holding on to it, maybe with the paper towel. I'm just gonna keep going with this part. You can go ahead and try to stir your vegetables. And they should start being, they should start caramelizing. And if you don't get all the corn off, you can just eat that later. And hope it doesn't get stuck in between your teeth. So far, this is one one corn husked, and then we're gonna put that into the um, into the food processor. So I'm gonna take my wooden spoon, and I'm going to stir the veggies. And they, I don't know if you guys are. Noticing that they're starting to brown. That's what you want. You kind of want to roast them in the pan. Okay.
So you're gonna stir it and then leave it to roast again. Okay? You following? Yeah. Okay. How's your corn? Sad, sad, sad boil going on here. <laughs> it's Getting a sad there. boil? It's a sad, it's a sad mini electric oven. <laughs> it's getting there. It's getting there? Okay. Well, I won't wait for you, but I'm gonna do the second corn. And I'm gonna use it. Oops, ow, ooh, even the paper towel is hot. So that's not necessarily the answer. Actually, the corn holders are the best thing. Yeah, I would think that the corn holder is, but I couldn't get the corn holder in. Are we using potato? No. Is it on the recipe? Yeah, the recipe potato. said potato. I did? Yeah. yeah, it said Yukon gold potato. Gold potato. Well, if you'd like yeah. to put the potato into the pan with the vegetables, you may, but you'll have to cut them into, into um, Less than quarter inch matchsticks. Mm. Or you can just not do them. I'm going to try a different corn, oh, corn uh, holder and see if that works. Because I can't get the corn holder in. That's the, pro that's the problem. Ah, there. Now I got it. Yes, the corn holder is the trick. Mm. This is definitely like playing with your food, you know? Put a pat of butter into that. Um, you're gonna put like a that much butter, so it's like a tablespoon of butter in with the corn, and then you're gonna transfer that. You're going to put a little bit of salt into that. And I'm going to wait till you are ready to do that next step. If your pan is heated up for the oil, I mean for the oil, for the, for the pork, then go ahead and put the pork into the pan. And we're going to roast it and pan it. Four minutes on each side. And I'm going to go ahead and stir my vegetables again. And they should be starting to really look caramelized. How are yours looking? Looking good. Okay. 
If you want it to cook a teeny bit faster, my suggestion is to take some of that liquid from the corn. Take a tablespoon of the liquid from the from the corn and just pour it, take two tablespoons, no three, put it into the pan. And then cover it. And that'll kind of make sure that everything is, is steamed and okay. Yep. If your pot is heated up, take your pork, lay those four pieces into the pan. You have to wash your hands because you touch the pork. And this is where you're going to put some salt and pepper onto the pork. And you're going to put the ancho chili pepper cloves and the oregano on the pork. All right. Make a sense, sir? Yep. Yep, I'm just catching up. Where are you, Pat? Where are you right now? Well, I'm getting my my corn done, but I actually I had the potatoes in another pan, so all right. I'm getting those caught up so I can add them to my vegetables. Okay. Good idea to make them in a separate pan. Um, yeah, I just have to grab another pan, but I need more. I need I need space. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear you. That's why I'm finishing my corn so I can add space for another pan. All right, well, I'm adding the ancho chili powder. It's got some big holes in it, so it's coming out pretty big. And I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of clove on the tip before I flip it over. But this is what your um, pork should look like. And we're not going to flip it until the edges actually start to turn a little white. So that'll be about four minutes. And I actually turned my my vegetables off, but I'm gonna leave them covered so that they, or I'm gonna put the lid on an angle. I don't know if you can see how it's angled. But it's angled. Some of the steam kind of comes out. Are you ready for the polenta yet or no? I got my corn. You got your corn? Yep. All right. So I am going to move this over to where the here we are at the food processor. All right, so we put some salt, salt into it and that's all we need. All right, I haven't, I, apparently I haven't used my, my Cuisinart, my food processor in a while. I can't remember how to close it. So you're gonna just pulse it. You gotta plug it in first, just so you know. <laughs> Sorry. It's the, it's the uh, like the beginner chef problem, right? 
take it to the pulse until it's kind of, um, it's not quite pureed. You still want it chunky, but if you think of um, polenta, it's kind of grainy. So you want it to be grainy and you're gonna have to check it every four or five pulses just to see how it is. So that was five pulses. That's another five. I need a couple more. And that looks about right. There's gonna be, well, it's not quite right. Once I opened it up, it's still quite chunky. You gotta get the, the push the edge, the, the kernels off the edge and pulse it again. So it might require 30 pulses total. You're just gonna keep doing that until you, it looks more like a paste or like a grainy mixture. And right now it told me to reserve the liquid to use the liquid, but mine is pretty thin. I don't think I need to add any of the liquid. How about you? All right, I think mine is, no, it needs, needs another 10. All right. So scrape off all that extra corn off the lid. And you're in this, this, can you see how it's kind of creamy and chunky? That's yeah. what it's supposed to look like. And you're gonna, well, if we had a pan, we could put it in a pan to heat up. But what we're gonna do first is we'll have to flip the, the pork. So what you can do, and this is what I suggest, is take that, take that pot. You can either save the liquid for something else, which is I should put it into a cup. But now you can go ahead and take the, the polenta, put it into this pot and kind of heat it up so it's warm again. We don't want everything else to be hot and the polenta to be cold. That would be not a good thing. I think that would be what they would call a chef's nightmare. Things at different temperature on your plate. All right. So, it's a little bit of overkill in my big pot, but I'm gonna just heat this up a little bit so that it is going to be warm instead of stone cold. Just put it on a really low heat just to heat it up. Spread it across the whole pan. And if you wanna cover it, you can do that too. All right. I'm gonna move back to the other side here. How's everybody's luck? Pork getting ready? I'm gonna get rid of my lid. I'm going to Take a fork and try a vegetable and see if it's cooked. Ooh, it is, it's hot. 
Eu vou só para escudir. Eu acho que banho já está ready. Eu vou deixar a pork on there for another minute. Nós não queremos raw pork. Eu acho que Anybody else ready to put it on a plate? Or just me? Definitely no. So this is what it should look like. You've got the polenta, and that's now it's just starting to heat up. You've got the pork that should be should be cooked through. But we're going to take a piece and test it. We're gonna cut through one of these pieces and see. And it's still not cooked yet. So the pork is gonna have to stay on here for another minute on e minute or two on each side. It's still... I don't know if you can see it, but it's still a little pink on the inside and that would not be good. That just means we have to keep on cooking. If you want to flip it back on its original side, you can do that too. That's what I'm going to do. I guess even the, and the, the, even the pork loins like that, the, they need five minutes on each side rather than four. How's everybody's coming along? It's getting there. It's pretty, so much fun. So my polenta is cooking. It's starting to bubble. So I'm going to turn that off. And I think my pork is probably, maybe now it's done. There's only one way to find out, right? I think that piece that you cut in half. Cut it again. Now, now it's completely white all the way through. So my pork is done. Now it's time to build it onto a plate. I'm going to hold on to the plate underneath, and I'm going to. The vegetables first. Put a nice pile of vegetables on the side. Then I'm going to do half a piece of pork. I'm not as hungry as And then I'm going to put a salad of the corn polenta. And there it is. Roasted. Pork and vegetables with polenta. How's everybody's turning out? Pretty good, just slow. You guys, in a, are you okay with me trying it? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Hi, I'm going to try and see how this is. Just need a fork. So here we have it. I'm gonna take a, I think I'm gonna try the polenta all by itself. 
Hmm. That's very good. Definitely different than your your store bought polenta. Then I take a little bit of the vegetables and have it with the pork. And then maybe I'll scoop up a little bit of the polenta, put it all together. Blow on it so it just doesn't burn my mouth. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. And I don't say that just because I made it. It's really good. Definitely good flavors and it definitely goes well together. And that only took what? 45 minutes? Not even? Yeah, yeah. just about. So definitely something you can make during the week. You can always change up the vegetables. Um, you can put chicken in instead of the pork. You can put, if you want to make it completely vegan, you can use the portobello mushroom instead of the, instead of the pork or chicken. And then if you really wanted to do the, the polenta fat, um, faster, you could potentially just use frozen corn kernels. Mm -hmm. Okay. That might be an easy way of doing it too. But we didn't have to put any of the extra liquid in there because the corn was fresh. Right. So, excellent. Well, bon appetit. Are you almost ready? Pretty much. Because you know, I always like to have the, um, the finished products that we all have it on the, on the screen at the same time. So good. Just plating it up, plating it up. Okay. All right, is the plate ready? I am ready. All right, so show us your dish. We'll do the, the dish together. Okay. Awesome. Get that out Perfect. Of there. <laughs> oh, so you want to know what the next class is too, right? Sure. Sure. So the next one. There's going to be, or it might not be beef, but I've got a beaten sweet potato coconut curry. So we might be able to switch it to, to chicken or we, or we can try to make it all vegetarian. Do you want a vegetarian version? Um, depends on what. what well, typically vegetarian, vegetarian we're, we'll have to make it with uh, the portobello mushrooms. Yeah, it was fun. Okay, so we'll make it with portobello mushrooms and maybe we'll make it with the crimini mushrooms, but it'll be a little bit different. But it'll be with the coconut curry, which we haven't done anything with coconut curry yet. Mm -hmm. But that'll be really tasty. Something a little bit different. Yeah. Yep. Yes, it does sound good. Yeah, I think it will be good. And it's just a matter of, you know, figuring out all the things that to, to make it more, um, more vegetarian. Maybe I'll add more vegetables than the recipe. I think I'm gonna add more vegetables than the recipe calls for. And that'll that'll be how we do it. All right. Okay. So that'll be in two weeks. So today is today is the 15th. So it'll be the 27th of July. Okay? Yep, sounds good. Awesome. So if you have any questions as you, and you're watching the replay, go ahead and post them below. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you'll never miss a cooking class. And if you have any suggestions,
questions on something that you want to make, you can also post that below or contact me directly, Joanna Hadaraska at www.nutritioninmotion.net. Bon appetit. <laughs>